good. Elliot's here. We can start now. <laughs> 12, section 12.3. We're having a little too much fun. Bond polarity. You know, this is this is this is going on YouTube, guys. So this is, we're recording this. We're live. It's Friday. Well, it's not live, but I'm not going to edit this out. Section 12.3 takes too much time. Bond polarity and dipole moments. We were talking about how in a covalent bond, in a covalent bond, the electrons are not always shared equally. And we talked about electronegativity, which is this um, idea that some atoms are more attractive in a bond to electrons than other atoms. And we looked at the trend in the periodic table and all that. So a dipole moment is a property of a molecule whose charge distribution um, is basically lopsided. So we've got um, an imbalance in the positive-negative charge of the molecule. And one way we do that, represent that, is using an arrow. And we draw the arrow from the less electronegative atom to the more electronegative atom. Let's see, what color should I use? I'll just be boring and use black. So here, here we have hydrogen. Hydrogen is less electronegative. It does not have much attraction for the electrons. Fluorine is the most electronegative element. It's the coolest house for those little boys. And so we indicate that with an arrow pointing towards the more electronegative, and then we put a little plus sign over here. And it just occurred to me that this semester, it's a little bit like the neighbor. So you go out in the neighborhood looking for your kid. Where'd they go? And the neighbor says, they went that way. So the arrow is the neighbor pointing. The kids are over there. Okay? So they're pointing, the arrow points in the direction of the more electronegative atom. Another way to represent this is with Greek letters, lowercase delta, delta plus, and delta minus that indicates partial charge. It's not an ion. Okay, it's not a plus one and a minus one. It's a partial charge. It's just a little lopsided. So let's look at water. So here's an illustration of water. And we have a hydrogen-oxygen bond and another hydrogen-oxygen bond. And so if we look at the dipoles in, for each of these, Um, for hydrogen and oxygen, it's going to... What happened? I forgot to push a button, apparently. It's going to go like this, right? And this is the plus, plus end. And the other bond is going to go the same way. And, and so if we add those things up, looking at over here those would add up to be in this direction. So if you remember vector addition from your math educational career, this is vector addition. A vector is an arrow that has a magnitude and a direction, and you can add them together. Um, so let's do something real quick here. I don't remember what color is on here, but... Oh, it's yellow. Let's do red, just because. Okay, so getting from, let's call this point A, and this is point B. So if you're walking around town, and you're trying to get from point A to point B. Okay, so in Reedley, um, let's say... Let's say this is the shell station, and this is um, where that Ford dealership used to be. It's at Kings Canyon down at the end of I Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can get there by going along I Street, right? Or you could go up Reed Avenue and across on Dinuba Avenue and get there the same way, right? You've traveled a different distance, but... That's what happens with vector addition. If you add this one plus this one, the net result is that one. 
Okay, so that maybe made sense to some of you, maybe not. Another way to think of this is uh, thinking about playing tug of war. So if, I'm going to move this over. So if you've got one little guy here, you know, this is actually the big guy. He's got a rope and he's holding on. And we got a little guy up here and we've got a little guy down here. And they're playing tug of war. There's a rope between them. And this guy is strong. This is a strong guy. And so he's pulling on this guy and pulling on that guy at the same time, and he's winning against both of them. What direction is he going to be moving in? He's going to be moving in this direction to pull on against both of those because they're at an angle. So he's going to move back. And so that's another way of thinking of vector addition. But the water molecule itself, the whole molecule, has a dipole moment, meaning that one end of the molecule is a little positive and one end of the molecule is a little negative. Any questions? I took that slide and made a big mess of it, didn't I? Polarity is important. Looks like there's maybe something missing here. Yeah, there, there's the picture. Polarity of compounds is really important because it affects their properties. Water is a polar compound. The molecule has a positive and negative end. And this is a huge factor in its properties, both physical and chemical. So because water is polar, ionic compounds can dissolve in it. So here we have an illustration. Here's the cation from an ionic compound. And that has a positive charge. The negative end of water, the oxygen end, is going to be attracted to that. And other water molecules are also going to be attracted to that. And so the water is, um, it can be friendly with the positive ion because it has a negative end. The water can also be friendly with the negative ion just by turning itself around and putting its positive side here. And so the water molecules will surround this ion because to get this negative ion away from the positive ion, you have to replace that force of attraction. To get it away, you have to make it feel comfortable. It's like, yeah, I was really, I was really tight with this cation, and I don't want to just, just dump off into nothing with nobody. And so, but you get a bunch of water molecules. We'll be your friends. Come, come with us. And so they, they take the, the negative ion away, and the positive ion doesn't tag after it because the water molecules are turning their other side to it and saying, hey, hey, we'll be your friend. And so it allows the ionic compound to separate into the ions in water. And that's because water is polar. Okay? A nonpolar substance, such as oil, that does not have a positive and negative end, you can't dissolve ionic compounds in them because it, they, they can't talk to each other. This um, property of polarity also allows water to remain a liquid at higher temperatures than we would expect it to be. 